Dear comrades and friends, as chairperson emeritus of the International League of People's Struggle, I convey my warmest greetings of solidarity to the people of Korea and other countries of the world who are inspired by the revolutionary ideas and feats of the great Korean leader Kim Il-sung in the struggle for national liberation, democracy, and socialism and are celebrating his 110th birth anniversary as the Day of the Sun, the everlasting source of revolutionary wisdom, energy, and militancy. I feel highly honored and elated to participate in this webinar as part of the worldwide celebration to pay the highest respects and honor to the memory of Comrade Kim Il-sung. For the first time, I recall publicly the time when I met him and conversed with him for a whole day in 1987. I had just been released from the prison of the Marcos fascist dictatorship when in the course of my world tour I visited the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and was received as a special guest of Comrade Kim Il-sung. We discussed the situation in our respective countries and the pertinent events and issues about the world. We considered the revolutionary prospects. We agreed on the need for strengthening the fraternal bonds of the Korean and Filipino peoples and their revolutionary forces, the solidarity of worldwide anti-imperialist and democratic struggles, and proletarian internationalism. In the course of my visit to DPRK, my admiration for Comrade Kim Il-sung became higher than ever before. I learned more about his brilliant application of Marxism-Leninism on the history and concrete circumstances of Korea. I recognized the great victories that he had achieved with his authorship of the Juche idea of the people being the self-reliant master and motive force of the revolution and the Songun idea of waging armed struggle to liberate the people from oppression and exploitation by imperialism and reaction. Since my youth, when the U.S. launched a war of aggression against Korea, I had taken notice of Comrade Kim Il-sung as the principal leader of the Korean Revolution. In his 30s, he had been able to defeat Japanese imperialism, and in his 40s, he was able to defeat U.S. imperialism. As a result of his resolute and creative leadership of the struggle of the toiling masses of workers and peasants against imperialism and feudalism, he was able to carry out socialist revolution and construction and turn DPRK into a bulwark of national independence, socialism, and the world proletarian revolution. Comrade Kibel Sung was fortunate to have been born to a patriotic family with revolutionary anti-imperialist tradition from his great-grandparents to his parents. Thus, even as a teenager, he became an activist in the Down with Imperialism Union and soon became an outstanding cater by training a new generation of communists and by awakening and organizing the masses. In Eastern Manchuria, he led the struggle against the Japanese imperialists and Chinese warlords and worked for the unity of anti-Japanese forces. In the course of the struggle, he was able to create the Juche and Songun ideas. He was able to develop and spread these among his Korean compatriots as he developed the first party organization, the Society uh, for Rallying Comrades, and the embryonic units of the Korean Revolutionary Army for the anti-Japanese armed struggle. At the Ming Yuegao meeting in 1931, he proposed a strategic policy of waging armed struggle, mainly in the form of guerrilla warfare. He founded the anti-Japanese People's Guerrilla Army. He began to apply the Songun-based concept of leadership and established guerrilla bases along the Tuman River. He established the People's Revolutionary Government and introduced democratic reforms. He expanded the armed struggle towards Korea. He built party organizations and expanded the mass organizations to support the armed struggle. 
an all-people defense system was developed in the guerrilla zones, and the battles in, in their defense were intensified. Having accumulated arms, he reorganized the anti-Japanese People's Guerrilla Army into the Korean People's Revolutionary Army. He also established the Party Committee of uh, uh, the Korean uh, People's Revolutionary Army and stepped up political and military activities, ever determined to advance the Korean Revolution in accordance with the Juche idea, he dissolved the guerrilla zones and spread the armed struggle over wide areas. At the same time, he strengthened solidarity relations with the international revolutionary forces and the anti-imperialist Allied Front. At the Nan Tao meeting of 1936, Comrade Kim Il-sung proposed a strategic policy of developing the armed struggle on a nationwide scale in Korea in the anti-Japanese National Liberation Movement. He consolidated the main force unit of the KPRA and formed the Association for the Restoration of the Fatherland. He directed the building of the Mount Paek Tu base with Paek Tu San secret camp at the center and more secret bases deep into Korea. He expanded the party and ARF organizations on a nationwide scale. After building the mass base on favorable terrain, he launched operations by large forces, as in the historic Battle of Pochobo, in order to inspire the Korean people to resist. Military and political activities were intensified to take advantage of the uh, Sino-Japanese War and prepare for an all-people resistance. He defined the task for continuous advance of the anti-Japanese national liberation struggle. The KPRA valiantly moved into the Musan area and strategic bases for the revolution in the northeastern area of Mount Paik Tu. Large units circling operations and intense dispersed actions on a wide scale weakened and damaged seriously the strength of the enemy. At the Shao Hayar Baling meeting of 1940, Comrade Kim Il-sung set forth the strategic policy of preparing the national liberation of Korea. Under his direction, he deployed the KPRA for small unit offensives and intensified military and political training of more KPRA units. Preparations were completed for founding the party and developing the ARF movement the preparatory work for all people resistance in the final campaign against Japan was also accomplished. The Allied Front of the Armed Forces of Korea, China, and the Soviet Union, and the International Allied Forces went into high gear. The KPRA carried out courageously and victoriously its operations in the final offensive against Japan and fulfilled the cause of national liberation. The historic victory of the Korean people's anti-Japanese armed struggle vindicated and upheld Comrade Kim Il-sung's ideas of Chu Chen and Song Un, which have been drawn from the revolutionary tradition of the Korean people. Comrade Kim Il-sung put forward the line of building a new Korea and the three major tasks for building a party, state, and army and triumphant return. He realized the cause of party founding and upholding and implementing the political and organizational lines of the party. He rallied and mobilized the broad masses of the people around the party. He established the Provisional People's Committee of North Korea, carried out democratic reforms and developed democratic education and culture. He directed the preparations for the founding of the regular revolutionary armed forces. He called for struggle against the U.S. imperialist occupation of South Korea and their moves to divide the Korean nation. He founded uh, the Workers' Party as a mass party of the working people. He called for and carried out a general ideological mobilization movement for nation building and emulation drive for increased production an anti-literacy campaign. 
Comrade Kimmelson set forth the task for the early stage of the period of transition to socialism and the People's Committee of North Korea in 1947. He put forward the line of building an independent national economy and the rehabilitation and development of the national economy. He developed the Korean People's Revolutionary Army into the Korean People's Army and built up the military strength of North Korea. He laid the ground and prepared for the socialist transformation of the relations of production. He convened the Second Congress of the Workers' Party of North Korea and effected the qualitative consolidation of the party. He realized the unity of the entire nation and founded the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. He supported the Chinese people in their revolutionary struggle and solidarity with the international democratic forces. And he rallied the patriotic forces for national reunification and the plan for peaceful reunification. Comrade Kim Il-sung led the war of national liberation against the U.S. war of aggression and liberated the southern half of Korea by a decisive counteroffensive. U.S. imperialism persisted in its war of aggression, bombed communities, and massacred millions of the civilian population. Under the leadership of Comrade Kim Il-sung, the people overcame grave difficulties. Revolutionary discipline was tightened and the rear was rearranged. The KPA carried out active positional defense warfare. The party ranks expanded and the people's government enhanced its role and functions. Wartime production was stepped up and preparations were made for post-war rehabilitation. The KPA was strengthened in a qualitative, qualitative way under the guidance of duty-oriented war theory and tactics. It fought the U.S. aggression to a standstill, frustrated it, and became totally discredited with its barbarities rejected by the people of the world. The party raised higher its ideological, political, and organizational capabilities as the people aimed for final victory in the war. Comrade Kim Il-sung put forward the basic line for post-war economic construction and the struggle for a reconstruction of the national economy. He set forth the strategic task of army building after the war and the development of the KPA into the party's army loyal to its leadership. He published the April Thesis and led the struggle to step up the socialist revolution to the full and establish the people-centered socialist system. He combated and overcame flunkyism and dogmatism and further promoted the Juche orientation after the war. He led the struggle to arm party members and other working people with socialist ideology and to defend and carry forward the revolutionary traditions of the people. He convened the Third Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea and led the struggle for the party's unity and against counter-revolution. He inspired the great revolutionary upsurge in socialist construction, the Cholima movement and its, its development. He initiated fresh changes in party work and promoted the Chong San Ri spirit and Chong San Ri method. He pursued the policy of independent and peaceful reunification of the country and supported the movement of Korean residents in Japan. He encouraged and supported activities against imperialism and for the unity and solidarity of the socialist countries. Comrade Kim Il-sung convened the Fourth Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea and set forth the task for the all-round construction of socialism. He built a new socialist economic management system and pursued a strategic policy of simultaneously carrying on economic construction and defense building and strengthening self-defense capabilities. He issued his thesis on the socialist rural question in DPRK and led the struggle to implement them. His efforts improved the activities of the working people's organizations and enhanced the officials' loyalty to the party, the working class, and the people were resoundingly successful. He led the conference 
of the WPK and the struggle to establish the partisan monolithic ideological system and transform the whole of society along revolutionary and working class lines. The plan for socialist industrialization was fulfilled. The movement of Koreans in Japan and international solidarity with the world revolutionary forces made new and greater achievements. Comrade Kim Il-sung convened the fifth congress of the party and set forth the task of vigorously pushing ahead with the ideological, technological, and cultural revolutions. He defined the three major tasks of the technological revolution and promulgated the socialist constitution. He developed further the Juche idea in a comprehensive way. He solved the problem of the continuity of the revolutionary cause. He made a profound development of the three revolutions and struggle for grand socialist construction. He approved Comrade Kim Jong-il's leadership system in the KPA and strengthened its fighting efficiency. He further consolidated the people's government and put the national economy on a duty-oriented, modern and scientific footing. He put forward his thesis on socialist education and struggle for development of socialist culture. He was ever desirous of and concerned with the fulfillment of the three principles and five-point policy for national reunification. He was consistently for consolidating unity with the peoples of the world who championed national independence. Comrade Kim Il-sung convened the Sixth Congress of the party and defined the modeling of the Korean society on the Yuchi idea as the general task of the revolution. He led the general advance for implementing the decisions of the Sixth Party Congress and generating the speed of development in the 1980s. He reinvigorated uh, the KPA politically, ideologically, militarily, and technically, and established Kim Jong il's overall leadership system in the KPA. He further developed the WPK into a Juche oriented revolutionary party. He defended and implemented the principles of socialist economic management and laid the solid material and technical foundations for socialism. He improved the people's material and cultural life. He promoted innovation in scientific and technological research and education. He continued realizing the proposal for strengthening the DPRK and he continued to advocate and work for the cause of national independence in global affairs. Comrade Kim Il-sung upheld the fundamental principles and fighting tasks for defending and advancing the cause of socialism in the face of the restoration of capitalism in the Soviet Union and elsewhere, and the overweening arrogance of imperialism. He consolidated the socialist ideological position and added luster to socialist culture and the national cultural heritage of the Korean people. He built up the defense capabilities of the DPRK and frustrated the nuclear arrogance of the U.S. imperialists. He pushed forward with ever greater vigor the socialist economic construction in accordance with the changed situation and the developing revolution. He was more than ever dedicated to the cause of national reunification by dint of the great unity of the entire Korean people. He was for revitalizing the socialist movement and building a free, peaceful, and prosperous new world. Comrade Kim Il-sung's beloved successors, comrades Kim Jong-il and Kim Jong-un, the entire Korean people, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the Korean Workers' Party, the Korean People's Army, and all Korean revolutionary forces have acclaimed him as the great leader of the Korean Revolution, as the author of the Juche idea and Songun idea, as founder of Socialist Korea, and eternal president of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. We join them in acclaiming and celebrating the great revolutionary legacy of Comrade Kim Il-sung. We have drawn guidance and inspiration from his 
adherence to Marxism-Leninism, his own original contributions to Marxist-Leninist theory and practice, his revolutionary example of arduous struggle and self-sacrifice and his great feats and victories in fighting Japanese imperialism and then U.S. imperialism and in realizing the anti-imperialist, anti-feudal democratic revolution and consequently socialist revolution and construction. We must continue to study and learn from the revolutionary teachings and achievements of Comrade Kim Il-sung. His legacy is highly significant and relevant today and in the future. It belongs to the entire proletariat and people of the world. We owe to Comrade Kim Il-sung that the DPRK, the Korean people, and all their revolutionary forces continue in social, economic, cultural, political, military, and diplomatic terms as a strong bulwark of the working class and entire people of the world in their just struggle for national independence, democracy, and socialism. The crisis of the world capital system is rapidly worsening. U.S. imperialism is failing to stop its strategic decline. The inter-imperialist contradictions are intensifying. So are other major contradictions, such as those between monopoly, capital, and labor, between the imperialist powers and the oppressed peoples and nations, and between the imperialist powers and the countries assertive of national independence and their socialist programs and aspirations. The anti-imperialist and democratic struggles of the people of the world are spreading and are bound to intensify in the current decade and thereafter. We are in transition to a new resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. We are happy and thankful that the revolutionary legacy of Comrade Kim Il-sung continues to be a major factor in ensuring the advance of the revolution under the leadership of the proletarian. Thank you.